Hi everybody, thank you for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a couple different things. I'm also going to be showing you guys a vlog. So first I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite skincare products at the moment, the ones that I use on my face, what I use on my body, also what I've been doing to help calm down my eczema. I've mentioned it in a few videos. Um, I've had eczema really bad for the past, I don't know, maybe like six, seven, eight years. The past three years, it's been the worst. Um, I used to be able to use some sort of ointment and then it would go away and then maybe come back in a month. But now I've gotten to a point where it just has not gone away. So I've been meaning to get to an allergist for so long. It's just when life gets in the way and you have a million other things to do, you kind of just put stuff like that on the back burner. So I was going through my emails like two weeks ago and a girl from a doctor's office in New York City had emailed me asking if I would be interested in having an allergy test. And it was actually perfect timing because I was getting to a point where my eczema has just been so bad and I've just been dealing with it and I feel like with something like that like you shouldn't have to deal with it there should be something that's gonna help get rid of it or help calm it down or just help make it bearable so when she emailed me I was like perfect timing we set something up and I went into the office on Monday and I got a full allergy test and I just wanted to let you guys know that in no way shape or form was I paid or sponsored to do anything mentioned in this video I just wanted to share my own experiences with you guys because Having eczema and having allergies sucks, let's be real. I figured if I could share my experience with you guys, maybe some of you can go out and try some of the things that I did and it'll help you guys deal with these problems. So first I'm gonna go through some of my favorite skincare products and then we will move into the vlog part of this video. So if you guys wanna hear all about it, please keep watching. So first let's talk about some face favorites. I am always using something with an exfoliator in it. The reason for this is my skin can handle it and I wear a lot of makeup during the day so I will use my face wipes to get off all the excess makeup and then I will go in with either like a bar of soap to get any extra makeup off and then I will use my exfoliator. I was using one of those brushes for a while, I have not been using those. Um, the two face washes that I've been back and forth with that I just always use and had no problems with are the Biore Pore Unclogging Scrub and then the Acne Stress Control by Neutrogena. So these both have like the exfoliating beads in them. I like these, they do the job in my opinion. I have not had pimples in a while. Sometimes I'll get one or two here or there when it's that time of the month, but I feel like that's kind of inevitable. Um, so for face wash, I think it doesn't really matter what I'm using. You don't need to go out and get exactly what I'm using. It depends on your skin type. If you guys have pimples or if you have dry skin or if you have oily skin, there's all different types of face washes that will work for you. I've always just bought the ones right at the drugstore because they've always worked and I've never had a problem with them. Um, so those are the two that I've always used. To me, it's more important what you're using after you wash your face. Um, so that's where I spend... Or thunder. So for me, it's more important what I'm using after I wash my face. The face wash part, again, feel free to use whatever you want. The next couple of steps I've noticed have really helped transform my skin. So I've been going once every two months to go get a, fa a professional facial. There's a place right by my house that I've just been going to that I really love. So what she does is she deep cleans my face. She uses... Um, like electrotherapy, I don't know what it is really, but it just kind of kills all the bacteria on your face. And then she uses like these LED lights to help with anti-aging. So that I think has really helped transform my skin in many ways. But um, again, so back to the products that I use, this toner has been my favorite. I think this is my third bottle. You can get these right on Amazon. I think it's about like 30 bucks, maybe a little bit cheaper, but it's by Rhonda Allison and it's the Purifying Lotion Antioxidant Toner. This is the toner that they actually sell at the place that I got my facials, but I found that it was a little cheaper on Amazon, so that's where I've been getting it. Um, so after I've completely washed my face, I use a cotton ball with a couple pumps of this and I just wipe all around my face and my neck. And even after I use a makeup wipe, soap, and face wash, sometimes there's leftover makeup. So this is gonna help really clean your skin and it's gonna help get rid of any excess makeup that you have. So this is amazing, I've been loving this. And then what I use next is a serum. To be honest, I have a couple serums and I'm always switching between them, so I don't really know which one is the best. But this is the one that I tend to grab the most. It's by Estee Lauder. It's the Wrinkle Lifting Slash Firming Serum. And I'll use this right after I use my toner. I only use this at nighttime. 
Um, after that, what I use and I've been using for like four years is the Nerium Nighttime Face Lotion. This stuff is incredible. Everybody in my family, all my close friends, everyone is using this. It's just the best lotion in my opinion. It's like an instant facelift. You put it on and it just like tightens up your face. It's good for pores, it's good for acne, it's good for scarring. It's really good for a lot of things. Sorry, I keep seeing someone walk back and forth outside. So I will use this every single night. Like, I don't ever forget to use this. So that is my complete nighttime routine. Um, I will also talk about what I do in the mornings. Sometimes I slack, I'm not going to lie. But um, whenever I'm about to apply my makeup, I'll always apply a lotion before my primer anyway. The lotion that I'm literally obsessed with is... It's by Image Skincare, and it's the Hydrating Repair Cream. You can also find this on Amazon, um, where I go and get my facials. They sell this there as well. But like I said, it's cheaper on Amazon, so that's where I restock all my products. I have been using this. You can see it's literally empty, almost empty. Um, I have been using this for, I'm going to say like four or five months, and it's just so refreshing. It smells like oranges. Yeah, it just smells like like an orange and cream smoothie which is incredible and I have the most sensitive skin of life so at first I was a little worried because anything with a fragrance can really um, like affect my skin and this I've had absolutely no problems with um, it's all antioxidant it has vitamins A, C, and E and it also has anti-aging ingredients in it so this has been my daily face cream I again try and use it every single day some days I forget, but most days this is what I'm using. Um, I also forgot to mention that I have an eye cream that I apply at night too. I apply the eye cream before I apply the Nerium. This is La Mer eye cream and I've heard just so many good things about it, so I've been using this. Again, I have a couple different eye creams that I go back and forth with. This is just the one that I tend to use the most. It is really, really pricey, so I don't recommend this for you young girls out there that are still have perfect skin this is for the girls out there that want to prevent aging and they want to prevent those dark circles and everything like that so this is what I will use so just in case anyone's confused because I kind of did it out of order at nighttime what I will do is I will use a makeup wipe then I will use a bar of soap then I will use my exfoliating cleanser then comes the toner the serum the eye cream and then the night cream so that's like seven steps but that's just something that I do every night and it may seem like it takes a lot of time but it really doesn't so I am super careful about my skin because I want to prevent aging I want to prevent wrinkles as long as I can I am only 24 but I started all of this I would say probably around like 1920 they say that it's good to start with the anti-aging stuff around 20 years old so that's kind of why I started with this whole thing but that is everything that I use as far as my face and my neck um, next let's move on to the body because that's where I have all of my issues um, I have my eczema that's really bad and I just have really dry skin first let's talk about body wash this one's completely empty I actually picked it out of my garbage to show you guys the Aveeno skin relief body wash it's fragrance free and it has like soothing oatmeal in it so I use this entire bottle and I didn't really I mean see any of a change just from a body wash. I was gonna rebuy it, but after my trip to the allergist on Monday, I decided I'm gonna try what she had recommended. So this is empty. I would say it definitely keeps your skin soothed. I recommend not using anything with fragrance. Um, I know they have all those amazing smelling body washes and believe me I wish I could use them but I just can't um, I actually used to use the one from Victoria's Secret it was like this purple one and it smelled so freaking delicious but every time I would use it either I would get hives or my nose would start to bleed so I stay away from anything with a fragrance also the laundry detergent that I use is Tide free and clear it has no dyes no fragrance that's another thing that's really important also if you guys have really bad eczema or itchy dry sensitive of skin don't use um what are they called dryer sheets don't use them because they have all kinds of chemicals in them and they irritate the skin so this is also something new that I learned I stopped using those and that has helped a lot the new body wash that I've replaced it with is by CeraVe I think it's either CeraVe or Cerav um, this is the hydrating cleanser for normal to dry skin this brand is accepted by the National Eczema Association, so that is why this is my new baby. Um, I haven't used it long enough to let you guys know if that it's like holy grail must have, but I just started using this and so far so good. Talking about lotions, I wanted to mention this one because 
I thought it was good, but it actually is not good for my type of skin. The M. Lactin, I think it's like a newer brand. I had tried a sample of it and I actually liked it. When I applied it over my eczema, it would burn. And at first I was like, okay, if it's burning, that's like a good thing. It'll help like clear it. That's what I just thought. So when I applied it, I was like, okay, I like that feeling. I like that it's burning. I feel like it's really working. But when I went on Monday, I had told her about my theory and she was like no no no, that's completely wrong you do not want to use anything that's burning your skin that does not mean that it's working so it's kind of like halfway full but I won't be using this one anymore and what I actually replaced it with is the CeraVe moisturizing cream and again it's also accepted by the eczema association I never actually even heard of this kind so I've tried like a million different prescription strength ointments and none of them cleared my eczema so I had told her that and she prescribed me it's called clo clobetasol propionate ointment clobetasol clobetasol propionate ointment this ointment you only need to use for a week I've only been using it three or four days and my eczema is already clearing up on my hand it's usually always bright red you can't even see from here but now it's like skin color and it's starting to fade so I am just like blown away I'm so excited that hopefully this is really working I will give you guys an update in like a week or so and let you know if it really does work but what she recommended to do and if you guys out there don't want to get a prescription and or can't afford the prescription this is what she recommended that you do so for me what I've been doing is applying the ointment all over wherever I have eczema then I apply this Cerave cream all over my entire body and she recommended getting like the ones in the jug like this because they're more like of a thicker cream they're not like that thin cream so then I apply this all over my entire body and then what I do is I put the aquaphor to really lock everything in wherever I have the eczema so it goes the ointment and then it goes the cream and then I apply aquaphor over the um, eczema and the reason that she said to do this is because one of the main reasons that eczema continues to flare up is your skin is just super super dry and by adding these layers it's going to help really lock in the moisture another thing that she recommend is getting those cloth gloves which I just haven't gotten around to getting them yet and sleeping with all of these ointments on your hands overnight and that's going to help really absorb all of the product and make it work to its fullest potential so these are all new tricks that I've never learned before I have always been the type where I would google everything and find out a million tricks and I've tried literally everything and so far this is what's been working um, again I will keep you updated because sometimes some things will work for a couple days and then it won't work but I also wanted to take you guys along and show you guys my first ever allergy test experience they did a full test to see what exactly I was allergic to. It was so crazy because she put like little, ne not needles, it was like this little tray and they put like little holes in your skin and then when you get hives, that's how you know what you're allergic to. So everything that I mentioned, some of them have been longtime favorites, some are newer favorites, but I just wanted to share with you guys what I've been using because I know a lot of people suffer from eczema or if you suffer from dry skin, some of these products may help you out. I definitely recommend going to see a doctor or a dermatologist if you guys are having any severe skin problems don't take what I'm saying and just think I know exactly what I'm talking about I'm not a doctor but these are just products that have worked for me and my skin so yeah that is basically it as far as products now I'm gonna show you guys the vlog from Monday I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys there he says he's abandoned on veterans and he says I will fight for them Hi guys, so we're sitting in traffic on our way to New York City. We are going to the allergy doctor. I've never been before, so I think they're going to give us like a test, me a test. And I'm kind of scared because I think they have to like prick you with million different things to see what you're allergic to but I had a girl email me about coming in and I was looking into finding a doctor anyway so I'm not sponsored by them they're not paying me or anything but they offered to do a free test so we figured we would vlog the experience for any of you guys maybe who are thinking about getting one but you're kind of scared you guys can witness what is about to go down so we're supposed to be there in 25 minutes we are running late because there's always traffic going to New York which is 
has a hole in his shirt right here, did you know? Sharknado in your ass. Ugh. My stomach hurts. You're not even in. It's currently 8.02. We were supposed to be there already. Nav says 15 minutes. This thing is an hour ago. A quarter mile. Gotta love New York. Have you ever had an allergy test? No. So I don't understand that like, I feel like I've heard that they like use like a little needle and then they prick you with like each type of Yeah, I don't know. I've never thing. done it before. I have no idea. You'll be alright though. It's nothing bad. It goes like my whole all, body everything like goes away. Up. Supposedly, no, they have it. Think about it. You're in a doctor's office. They have everything there to help you. Got yeah, like EpiPens. Holland traffic. My favorite thing of life. Just inching up little by little. We headed north on 29 through Kansas City. Fourth of July in the late night fall. There were fireworks to see. And when I'm Into um, like finding an address, and then I saw the email, and I was like, perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been like allergic to everything. My whole life, uh, like fruits, vegetables, every single animal possible, pollen, grass, like typical. Okay. And then um, the past like I don't know, three years, I started getting. I think I had eczema here and there, but it's been like bad. It won't go away. I gotta get it's like patches like on my hands, my elbows, my legs. <laughs> and it like flares up, and then I, I don't know if it's something I'm eating because some days. It's fine, and I'm not even itchy. Or other days, it's like I itch it, and then it starts bleeding because I'm itching so much. So sure. something that you eat on Monday won't trigger your eczema till Wednesday oh, or Thursday. Nice yeah, so, so you're that, thinking, that what was weird thinking. We were like, what did yeah. I eat today that made it flare up? But it yeah. could be from days before. It could before. be from days before. So eczema can happen at any time. We used mm -hmm. to think it was just a childhood disease, but right. now we're seeing more and more adults just developing it out of the blue. Mm -hmm. If you have seasonal allergies, you're more likely to get you're at higher risk for eczema. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with your food allergies, you're at higher risk for eczema. And because eczema is a delayed reaction, it's so hard to pinpoint the trigger. Yeah. And the issue with eczema is that you have an impaired skin barrier. One of the proteins in your skin isn't necessarily properly formed, and so mm -hmm. moisture can leak out. And so you're losing moisture at a higher rate than someone else without eczema. Yeah. So you have to moisturize more frequently than someone mm -hmm. without eczema. And so the key is moisturizing two to three times a day, mm -hmm. if you can. Okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of the lotions, the ones that you pump out, okay. because I don't necessarily think they're thick enough. Right. Um, I kind of like the, the creams, the ones that you get in the tub, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. scoop out, and you want to put that on. And then I also like layering my creams and okay. lotions. So I like to do a layer of, let's say, CeraVe cream, which I actually think is probably one of the best that's out there. There's also a Vanna cream, and I can show you online. Okay. Um, and they're not expensive. These are all yeah. drugstore brands. Okay. Um, and so you'll put a layer of the cream on, and then for the patches, um, if you have an eczema patch, after you put the cream on, you then seal it with either like Vaseline. So you told me that you get itching of your mouth, itching of your throat when you eat apples, peaches, pears, plums, mm -hmm. melons. Does it happen with nuts, like almonds? Yeah, raw almonds, yeah, raw. right? So I'm not I'm not just making guessing what food allergies you are. They all run in the same family. Okay. So if you have seasonal allergies, um, you could be allergic to certain foods. So with the apples, the peaches, the pears, the protein and the fruit is very similar to pollen, to pollen protein. So when yeah. you're taking a bite of that apple or you're taking a bite of the peach, mm -hmm. your body thinks that you're eating pollen. Um, so it automatically has a reaction. And so it's going to have a reaction. The most common reaction is just itching of your lips, itching right. of your gums, yeah. itching of your throat, and that's usually about it. If you heat the food, 
So that's why I was asking, like, with an apple pie, do you have any symptoms? Mm -hmm. Bless my apple pie, but, like, I know, for instance, some carrots. Yeah. When I have them cooked, I'm fine. No problem. So and then he was like, well, is it the pesticide that they're cooking it with? Like, what is it that I'm allergic to? Why raw? Like, yeah. A lot so. of people think that it's the pesticide. Yeah. And they're spraying so the animals don't mess up at the farm. But they have to spray them. makes more sense. Well, well no, of course. Cook that because it doesn't make sense. Uh, they, uh, it yeah. cook, but sometimes when you cook it, then don't you cook the nutrients away from what the food has? Well, it depends on the food, but with oral allergy syndrome, so if you cook the carrot or if you cook the apple, mm -hmm. the protein denatures or it breaks down and it's no longer recognizable. Right, okay. So, Honestly, I never tell patients to look anything up, but look this up. Okay. Like if you're allergic to tree pollen, you're more likely to be wow. allergic to almonds, apples, cherries, peaches, pears. I mean, these are Unreal. most of the foods that you're yeah, eating. Yeah, yeah. Same thing if you're allergic to grass pollen, you're more likely to be allergic to melons. And whenever I hear patients who have oral allergy syndrome, mm -hmm. um, it's just a sign to me that you probably have seasonal allergies that are worse than they were before. Okay. But, uh, but it's all related. Okay. And some of these foods could definitely trigger eczema. Let's do some food allergy okay. testing and then we'll see. Perfect. So I'm going to have you come on up. So it's just going to be a quick poke. Okay. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, you let me know and then we stop. Okay. All right. Sure. Plus I'm on camera so I have to be able to handle it. <laughs> All right, babe. And if you're allergic, you'll feel a little itchy. So that was a quick poke. Not too bad. Oh, okay. I'm going to keep going. So each individual poke has a different or individual allergen on it. Interesting. This like puree of every like little thing. Like what is this? Uh, like, just liquid, they, liquid they like? the, Yeah, they extract the protein hmm. from the food or the pollen cool. that causes the allergen. Feel like a little tingling. Yeah. Okay. Like a little. I put a control on your right arm that should cause some itchiness. So yeah. there should be one that causes some itching. Oh yeah, I feel it. You feel it? Mm -hmm. You want to itch? I mean, I'm not gonna itch. Oh, look at your poor thing starting to flare up. I'm flaring. Okay. Yeah, this arm feels like really tingly. In this arm? See, it's like getting red. No, this arm so far is. Fine, but it looks like it's gonna You can see that the blotchiness in your... Right? Isn't that crazy? I just got poked, as you've seen. It feels really tingly. It's really cool, though. They literally, like, did how many different tests at once, and it was so quick. So 1%. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different things, 60 different things. It's crazy. Salt water, this is a control. This is just to see how sensitive your skin is. And your skin turns a little red, but it's not awful. Then we did um, egg white, egg yolk, milk. These look good. Okay. Peanut is positive. Mm -hmm. And we grade everything zero to four. Usually what we do is we measure how big the hive is, okay. and then we also measure how big the we the flare or the redness is. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, so the one thing that I just want to say is that I just think it's fantastic that you're going to do a piece on eczema because yeah. there are so many young men and women who have eczema. They have no idea what triggers it. They don't know how to treat it. Yeah. And for me, when I look at eczema, it's a whole lifestyle issue. It's about finding what the root cause is and trying to get to the problem of it as yeah. opposed to just prescribing steroid creams right. and then the eczema comes back and then it's frustrating. Right. So I think it's fantastic that um, we're able to share some information. And, Thank you so much. Um, oh, you're welcome. And if there's anything that I can say for anyone who's suffering with eczema, see your allergist. See if there is a potential allergy that's triggering your eczema because um, it absolutely could be. It could be a food allergy. It could be an environmental allergy, so something like pollen. Right. Um, and it could be a combination of things. And then also just things that you're doing with uh, in your daily routine, your daily lifestyle that could be making your eczema worse. The yeah. more people that talk about eczema, food allergies, yeah. seasonal allergies, it's just beneficial. Yeah, because I don't think that uh, I don't think that the public is really aware. Of I know, that. and people just deal with it. Like for me, for so long, I was just dealing with it, and then I was like, all right, I'm not doing this yeah. anymore. Like, what can I do to change it? So I can't wait to try out some of these creams. So. Yeah, hopefully awesome. it'll work. Yeah, definitely. All right, thank so you nice so much. It's just so nice here. to meet you too. I appreciate everything. <laughs>
Or saw something on what? I don't even know what I was looking at online. And it says how you can spread bacteria through kissing. And how you take the five most common spots where bacteria will be. In your mouth? Get through kissing. After like 10 seconds of kissing, this supposedly there's so much bacteria. Keyboard. Oh right, keyboard and your phone. Oh. Is that? Did I just see that fly? What? I swear, I think I just saw that fly. Not someone losing my mind. It's like Walter White. Right, literally, Walter let him, White. Let him stay in here and die then. Like, this is now two days that we've had this fly. I'll, I'll be dead in three days. They don't live. Well, like, where does he go for like? I don't know. Just minutes at a time. Hours. You know the phrase. Couldn't hurt a fly. It wouldn't hurt a fly. How much have you hated this fly? You've been cursing. You've been. I don't angry. hate flies. You're the person no, who gets you, me all stressed out no. because you're like thinking it's a bee. It's not you a were bee. opening up your door and going like this and airing out. Yeah, the car. because he was flying around my ankles and I don't want all that. Right, so, so I was I'll annoyed. Say you were annoyed. Maybe he just likes my ankles after I thought about it, you know. So I accepted him. Mm, that's what it was. The only things flying or crawling near me when I am not aware. To realize that you are a million times size of this thing, and it, a fly doesn't have anything to do that other than a horse fly, which is not what this guy is. This guy's just your regular standard house fly. Yeah, but Only it could be like right now, like crawling on my head, and the fact that I don't know about that, like that's the, what skews me out. That they could just be like anywhere, and I'm not aware. So when I see it, I just freak out because I don't know how long it's been there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fair. Maybe see news in front of us. It wasn't as bad as I thought. The prick parts kind of hurt. It was kind of uncomfortable, but I basically found out that I'm allergic to everything that I thought I was allergic to. Um, she recommended some new lotions, which is really cool because I'm always looking for new lotions. So I'm gonna try those. What else did she recommend? No dryer sheets, which we do use, so that could be another cause for my eczema. Um, and then she also got me a prescription cream that's hopefully gonna take my eczema away. I talked about my eczema problems in other videos and I've never really found anything that worked so that's why I kind of got to this point where I wanted to go and see an allergist and see if she had recommendations so she did so I'll try them out and I will keep you guys updated on if it works for me so if it does stop making that face Nicholas you're like a it's like so square like do it with the neck it's perfectly pencil or eraser head